David, we were up over in Knott's Berry Farm, looked out the window, and what do you have? Another pursuit. This is eastbound 91 freeway, just past the 5 freeway. Unclear which agency is pursuing this vehicle. Right now, he's going so fast, there's nobody right behind him. But very erratic driving, getting off of the 91 freeway. It's a black Honda Civic. The driver's side window rolled down. Apparently, this was an attempted traffic stop. As I mentioned, unclear which agency and who is pursuing here, or if this is technically still in pursuit mode. But what you can see here is that the driving is very dangerous, very erratic and aggressive tactics as he tries to thread the needle here, squeezing through these two cars at a red light. You can see some front end, front end damage on that bumper now turning left onto Huntington Avenue, just south of the 91 freeway. This appears to be a residential street doing about 60 miles per hour down a residential street uh, just east of Maple Street. So Huntington Avenue and Maple Street just coming up on Maple, making a right turn now, slowing down just a little bit, zigzagging his way again through this residential neighborhood with nobody right behind him, but making random turns nonetheless here at a pretty high rate of speed and not really stopping for any of these stop signs. Looks like he's pulling over and maybe thinking about dumping the vehicle. There goes the driver's side door opening up and he is either gonna walk or run away here, dropped his phone, and now maybe getting in the vehicle. We'll see here. Not, uh, it looks like he's very, very agitated in a rush to get away from that vehicle. Getting in a pickup truck. We'll see if he, okay, yeah, he does not. He does, I was going to say, maybe he happens, yeah, he's breaking in, breaking into the pickup truck. Right, so he's getting back in that original car almost for a second. Looks like he was uh, intentionally getting in that pickup truck as if he also had the keys, but obviously was trying to break in there, now choosing to get away in that original pursuit vehicle. I could tell you that Anaheim PD's helicopter is overhead here. They have eyes on it. They are probably streaming ABC7 as we speak as well. Uh, and you can see now getting back onto Falmouth Avenue at a high rate of speed after failing to take over that pickup truck back in that original original Honda Civic uh, as he tries to hide out somewhere in this neighborhood. Unclear whether he's going to get back on the freeway here, but he's almost doing a complete circle as he's uh, basically come out the other side of this neighborhood. So heading northbound now on Catalpa Avenue into oncoming lanes of traffic. Some wild turns here. They have to get some ground units into this area because the driving, as I see it, is just way too dangerous to let this go on much further, nonetheless, in the middle of rush hour. ability of the fact that it might be running out of gas. So if the gas is low, and if it's a stolen car, that would have made a lot of sense. Now he's parking it in a parking spot once again. Clearly, really, really trying to get rid of this vehicle and now running through this subdivision here. We'll try and get across here. It looks like it's going to be North Schooner Lane as he runs through these townhomes uh, in Anaheim. We'll try again. We'll try and get, if we widen now, we'll see. Okay, let's stay on him. Stay on him right here. He's just running around this building here. Uh, looks like he's coming up on another couple of cars parked here, a van and a small red compact car. Looks like he's trying to break in to the van. He finds an open door, an open door in that white van. And now you can see the black and whites pulling up right behind him. He's blocked in. He's, he's inside the car, likely trying to hotwire it at this point. And you can see they have lit him up and basically blocked him in. If he tries to back out, it could get ugly. But in any event, officers now with their guns drawn, squarely wait, they had their eyes on him. They're just waiting for backup at this point and obviously trying to uh, bark some orders at him, hoping he gets out of the vehicle. Let's try and come around the other side if we can. If it's, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, there's a, we're actually on the north side of the Disneyland TFR, so we actually are gonna be forced to hold this position right here. Unfortunately, we can't see the driver's side of that white van, but again, if you're just tuning in, there is a pursuit driver that is just, look at this, hey, look at this. Ramming into the front of that black and white, that is Fullerton Police. Fullerton Police now trying to block him in as he puts it in reverse. 
He's going up and down. Well, he has nowhere to go here. He's really trying to ram that car out of his way as he is now stuck in that parking spot. There's really nowhere for him to go. He's got a fence in front of him. The car, look at this. Look at the violently into reverse, ramming right into that Fullerton Police Department vehicle. That's right. Yes. This is very dangerous. He obviously, that officer has no choice but to use force if his life is in danger, but he is waiting for backup, and at this point really has very few options available to him. Here's another officer on the suspect's right rear flank. So now two officers, not sure if they both came from that same patrol car, but I only see those two officers on foot. And he is just going back and forth. Now he's created some room to escape here, and he's... He's going to probably try and ram in again or do a four-point turn and turn it around. He's got to turn it all the way around without hitting that tree, and he may have a couple minutes to do it here because what else, what else can those officers do? They really don't have many options. Here comes the backup. Here comes backup. Head-to-head. -head. This is dangerous. Look at this. A head-on. A head-on situation almost with that patrol car. Officers out of the vehicle, and now he's racing through the subdivision as more officers race into this neighborhood. Look at this. What is he going to do here? Around all of those black and whites, those are two uh, Fullerton police officers that are now going to try and turn around with him. Look at this. W look at what we are seeing here. He is now back on Coronet Avenue after evading four separate black and whites who were just pulling into the neighborhood to try and help that original officer uh, after a wild scene in that parking lot. We now have a brand new pursuit on our hands here as he has carjacked this vehicle, but we are in a commercial area. It's going to turn into a more residential street if he continues, but there is a black and white now behind him. Code 3 with lights and sirens on about maybe 50 feet back. Let's go ahead and widen out and see which agency that is that's behind him. That looks like uh, uh, maybe still Fullerton. It's Fullerton PD. Fullerton PD back in pursuit, guys. Uh, yeah, we're, we're in the Norwalk area, I think, now, as he comes up. Well, no, he's not in Norwalk yet, but look at this. He's going through that gas station without any tire on that left, right, that left rear wheel. Almost struck several vehicles there. A miracle nobody's gotten hurt yet. But you can see he is really uh, in a jam now. Lots of traffic ramming into all of these cars here. Again, this is northbound Carmenita Road now, and he's, it's, it's not moving. He's stuck. Now he's stuck. It looks like he's stuck. Sparks flying, and that patrol, that officer right there, has to treat this with kid glove care. And likely going to have to step away from his vehicle, because we've already seen him uh, put it in reverse once and ram into that uh, other patrol car. Right now he's trying to go forward, and he's not going anywhere at all. It looks like the van is now stuck. Yeah, this, this is likely to start a fire. You can see those, those rims are starting to glow. Uh, there's certainly more on the way over here. Right now, if we widen it just a little bit, we can confirm just that one black and white. Just the one black and white. We're at uh, Placid Drive, north, uh, northbound Carmenita Road, and he is now stranded here. We'll see how this officer deals with this. He's likely just going to wait for backup, and right now it doesn't appear as though that van is going anywhere. Uh, he's probably not aware... That's right. You've got to wonder, you've got to wonder if he's thinking about getting out of this van and trying to hijack another one. You've got to at least wonder whether that's going through his mind. He's probably not aware. Well, now he's aware. I was going to say, he might not even be aware that his wheel's on fire, but certainly he's aware, aware of the fire under the hood. More pieces flying out there as this vehicle is starting to come apart. I, 
I'm thinking it came from the, well, it could be, because, I mean, where else would that smoke be coming from? But I don't think any shots have been fired yet, so that probably is not the case. But that wheel, that left rear wheel, is also creating uh, some metal as well. So it could have come from the rear, but now I've got to wonder uh, if that transmission is just uh, reached its limit, and that's what's producing the, the smoke here. Not sure, but in any event, it has overheated and uh, it looks like the vehicle is now disabled. Additional units now pulling into position here. So some backup from CHP, backup from CHP and Fullerton PD as he gets out of the vehicle, crawls out of the passenger window and is now running for it northbound Carmenita Road. Running up northbound Carmenita at Luffingwell Road as he crosses the street. We've seen this person make several desperate attempts to hijack other vehicles. We will see what he decides to do here. Lots of folks getting home here in Fuller, or here in uh, the uh, La Mirada area, I want to say, and he is now running down the sidewalk without any other wheels at his disposal. He's going to start running out of steam here, and we'll see if this uh, ends in a foot pursuit because I think they are pursuing him on foot, but I can't confirm that from my vantage point. Here comes another officer uh, in the opposite direction, and he's now run into a residential uh, alleyway here. Loses his footing. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's now on private property. You saw that it looked like a woman uh, next to her home here. He's now in the backyard, and he's going to hide out here along Leffingwell Road and jumping fences. He's jumping fences looking for a way into one of these homes. Little dog. Small dog there in the backyard. He's under that, under that, uh, that, that patty, yeah, that awning, he's trying to get into that car, into that uh, house, rather. Several dogs barking. He's now going through that, through that sliding glass door, making his way into the home. Somebody appears to be, yeah, it might even be a homeowner, not sure. Completely unaware. Yeah, he's on the other side of the building. I don't think he has any clue. Very dangerous situation here where we have no information. But here comes somebody running out the front. Look at this. Look at this. A confrontation inside the house, a family home. And now we're going to come around the front here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. He's in the truck. He's in the truck. He's in the truck. He, he, just, he just got in that truck. There's a dog under that truck. Oh my goodness, look at this. He just stole the, oh my God, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is incredible. This is incredible. <laughs> Unbelievable. I cannot believe what we are witnessing, guys. They are going to have to get creative here because this person is, abs look at this. Just ramming into cars, additional bumpers flying off of those, that other vehicle. And now he's, uh, I believe, westbound on Leffingwell Road. I want to say westbound. Is that? Can we put the compass up real quick? Yeah, westbound Leffingwell. If you live in this area or have any idea where we are here, if you are looking at, at us, you need to stay inside because there is a dangerous suspect behind the wheel here. I feel very sorry for all of the other cars on the road here uh, as he continues to make his way towards the freeway once again. We may find ourselves back on the freeway. But look at him, a little bit of traffic, and once again, right through another gas station. This is just incredible. This is the third vehicle that he has stolen today. Uh, you're starting to get a better idea of how much law enforcement is dedicated to getting this guy off the road. There's about a dozen units behind him. We just saw another half dozen in front of him in the opposite lanes. And now he is continuing at a high rate of speed on a straightaway portion of Hacienda Boulevard. Coming up on Colima Road once again if he decides to get back on Colima. But look at that. He's losing that rim. 
He, he's on borrowed time with this truck. It's a... It, it, barely, barely maneuvering. You see, if we're, we're very fortunate that he's on a straightaway section of street here, but if he has to make any any tight turns at any speed, it's gonna be very difficult for him. But at the very least, you're gonna start to see that, that wheel come apart, and eventually the axle won't be able to turn, but that's obviously a heavy duty truck. It's built uh, for all kinds of situations, and these are uh, not easy to break down, but you can see he's definitely testing the limits of this truck, and now without that front left tire, it's only a matter of time. Now those deputies have fallen back once again because he's blowing through these red lights, continuing at a high rate of speed, 70 miles per hour, at what cannot be more than about a 45 mile per hour speed limit, and he's blowing through all these, all these intersections with cross traffic, so many close calls, it's a miracle we haven't seen anybody get hurt, now under the freeway, that I believe was, that was the 605. Uh, the 60, excuse me, oh, oh, crashing into a Jeep, crashing into another vehicle here, and to, and wiping him out off the road. He just took out another vehicle, rammed into him, heavy damage, I hope that person's okay, up on the curb, and now he's trying, look at this, again, ramming into more cars and trucks. Head on, head on, head on. Unbelievable, head on with another car. And the, here comes, the, here comes uh, uh, not even a pit maneuver, but they rammed into it from behind, into a gas station, folks getting gas at the corner of Gale and Hacienda, into a gas pump, and now he's gonna try and get out probably, but he, now he's gonna put it out in reverse, back in reverse towards that deputy. Look at this, ramming into the front end, they're shooting, they're shooting at him, they're shooting, we're gonna wind out, and they are now firing into the cab of that pickup truck. Unbelievable. They are using force, deadly force is being employed at this moment to try and stop this madness in the middle. They are stopped, they have stopped, the, wheels, the wheel is off, the, that front left wheel is off. Yep, is it still going? Still going, so his foot's on the gas? Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. Foot on the gas, bullets flying through that truck and now we'll see as they surround the vehicle, multiple teams and canine units already on the scene here, surrounding the vehicle, at least the rear of the vehicle. They can't surround it completely, obviously. They don't want to create a crossfire situation. Yes, yes. Somebody's hurt, it looks like somebody, that's the driver. That's the driver, it looks like the driver of that car that he rammed head on into. It looks like he's being arrested. He's being detained for some reason. Not sure what that's about, but we'll focus on the truck for now. We'll focus on the truck, obviously more to that story, but uh, clearly this ending in a crash with several vehicles, including that one right there. And you can see he's still gassing it, creating a lot more, sm a lot more smoke. The vehicle's not going anywhere. It's completely disabled. Something, something just went through that driver's side window. He's still gassing it. Multiple bullet holes through the driver's side window, guys. Those are shotgun shells. Those are, those are high caliber shotgun shells that have now sh that fired right through that driver's side window. Uh, most likely putting an end to this.
Yeah, this has come to an end, guys. I hate to tell you, but, th well, I'm happy to say that this has come to an end, but obviously a, a treacherous and deadly situation potentially for uh, for the suspect. So we will see uh, if that uh, if those wheels finally stop spinning, which it appears that they have. You can see dozens and dozens of officers at the corner of Gale and Hacienda Boulevard. Canine units at the ready. They are going to approach eventually. It could take a lot of time in some cases uh, to approach the vehicle and try and get a better view uh, into the cab. Uh, unfortunately, really hard to see through the front windshield because if we get in front of it, you see the awning from the gas station uh, would be concealing it. So we really can't get a good view into the driver's seat just yet. But uh, we've got a... A whole bunch. There's, there's, uh, there's smaller, yeah, smaller rounds in the rear window. Large shotgun shells through the front window. Uh, it's just a wait and see game at this point. They are eventually, obviously, treating this with kid glove care. But obvious, but obviously, they have to take their time before just approaching the vehicle. And they have look at there's a fire though. There's a the vehicle's on fire. The vehicle's on fire, and that's going to require the fire department. They're going to have to pull them out. Absolutely. They're going to have to pull it out of the driver's seat. That, this is not over by any stretch. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that last officer tried to ram into him intentionally, uh, but then he put it in reverse and rammed right back into him. There were multiple, I mean, if you ask how many black and whites have been hit, I've lost count, quite frankly. So I can't tell you exactly how many. There were a whole bunch of parked cars and cars in traffic at the end of that pursuit before that major intersection. Uh, and there was one Jeep, a white Jeep uh, soft top, that he got wiped out completely. I have a feel. I hope he's okay. They're gonna have to check on him. Multiple shots. Yep. Thank you. All right, guys. I'm being told that uh, obviously we don't know what his condition is inside that vehicle, but they believe, they have reason to believe he is armed inside that vehicle. So now it appears that they are aware of a weapon potentially inside that vehicle. That's going to, not that that, I mean, <laughs> that, that whole truck has been a weapon this entire time, obviously, but if there's a weapon inside that vehicle, that adds to the calculus uh, as they approach the vehicle. But in any event, they're going to try and get clear eyes on them before opening that car. Again, this could take a lot of time. This could turn into an extended standoff, potentially, unless they decide that uh, they want to be more aggressive. Obviously, go ahead, sorry. Oh, what? Oh.
and they've got tactical tools at their disposal if they face any resistance. But the first order of business is going to be clearing that driver's side window. The glass breaker is being employed, ramming the driver's side window, and now getting a much clearer view that we will keep somewhat... There is movement. He's moving. He is moving. I saw his hand. The back seat appears clear. Now they'll try. It looks like he's injured, and it looks like they're going to make an attempt to open that door, but it's not open yet. Uh, they may just pull him through the windshield. They may pull him through that window, guys. I have a feeling they will just pull him right through the driver's side window without bothering with the door. Uh, we don't know what kind of condition he's in, but you saw what I saw, which was his hand moving. It looked like he maybe had crawled into the passenger seat, and there you go. They're going around the passenger side to to bring him out. Wow. Stepping out of the vehicle. Whoa. Whoa. What in the world? I'm sorry. I'm speechless. I mean, this is just, uh, you know... Uh, Incredible. It was an actual miracle. Absolutely. It's almost hard to believe it's over. I, 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 I can't believe what we just saw. That's one of the wildest things about this. We were right over Knott's Berry Farm, and as they apprehended two suspects inside the park after locking down Soak City, we turned around, Anaheim PD's airship was heading to another pursuit, and we literally turned around, and here came this Honda Civic flying up the 90 freeway right past Knott's Berry Farm, and that's when the pursuit was on once again. From one to another, we stumbled on this one, and the rest is literally history. I mean, you know, I, I, <laughs> this is up there, guys. I, I always go back to the RV, like David said. But this was, this was breathtaking and far more dangerous. When we think about the, uh, the, just the way it ended. I mean, bullets flying at the end of such a dangerous pursuit where so many motorists were placed into harm's way. I mean, a home invasion and the a home invasion in the middle of it with dogs under the car. My heart was stopping when he got into that truck with the dogs under the truck.